Welcome to Long Covid Doctor, an educational series for sufferers of Long Covid. I'm Dr Tim Robinson, formerly a family doctor, GP for 30 years, now GP lead for three NHS Long Covid clinics and a GP clinical lead in Long Covid services across the southwest of England. This episode is on depression and Long Covid. In part one, I will talk about the symptoms and causes. In part two, I will talk about the treatments, management and outcomes. Check out the references, resources and links to social media in the show notes below. Just to say, any advice, diagnoses, treatments that I mention should only be considered after discussion with your own doctor or medically qualified health professional. And so, here we go, depression and long COVID. So firstly, the context, the background. Depression, in my experience, in the three long COVID clinics I work in, is quite common and has a significant impact on our patients. This may be part of a previous mental health issue, maybe a previous diagnosis of depression, or it may be a completely new depression never had it before for no reason it's here now purely due to having long covid and so firstly what exactly is depression and how does it present itself depression is a mental state in which you feel sad flat down you have no interest in the things you used to enjoy Depression affects a person's thoughts, behaviour, feelings and sense of well-being. Depression may lead to feelings of total helplessness and hopelessness, despair, thoughts of self-harm or even suicide. Along with the above, other mental symptoms of depression are feeling tearful, feeling irritable, intolerant of others, no motivation, low self-esteem, difficulty in making decisions, shying away from family life and social interactions, preferring isolation, disregard of personal care, hygiene, dress, general appearance, neglecting hobbies and interests, basically not getting any enjoyment out of life. With depression, there may be physical symptoms such as loss of energy, loss of appetite, sleep disturbance. That could be either insomnia or early morning wakening, low sex drive, uh, moving or speaking more slowly than usual. Depression comes on slowly. People struggle on for weeks or even months trying to cope with their symptoms. People are often unaware that they are unwell. Often it's a friend or family member who suggests that something is wrong. Depression often coincides with worry and anxiety. Anxiety is a feeling of unease, such as worry or fear. Anxiety is a normal response to a situation in which we feel threatened or at risk of harm or physically or mentally. This is normal, but some people find it hard to control their worries. The anxiety feelings become more constant and impact on everyday life. This is generalised anxiety disorder. It may present with mental symptoms such as restlessness or difficulty concentrating, irritability, feeling on edge. It may present with physical symptoms such as palpitations or dry mouth or faintness or trembling. Careful examination uh, and questioning of the patient will reveal this specific diagnosis and then and help distinguish between depression or anxiety. However, sometimes the case is not necessarily clear cut. There may be elements of both conditions, both anxiety and depression. 
but with a preponderance, a predominance, sorry, for one or over the other. Regardless of this uncertainty, the most important thing is to be on the lookout for red flags for depression. Symptoms such as total hopelessness, complete despair, thoughts of self-harm or suicide. These symptoms must be taken extremely seriously. You must sort of seek help urgently through a GP or bringing 111 for advice, medical advice, depending on the level of concern. And so how does depression interfere with long COVID recovery? When someone is not calm, relaxed, balanced, restorative repair processes are not optimal, not ideal. When I say not optimal, therefore they're not working efficiently at their best capacity, which of course is not ideal while you are trying to, to recover from long COVID. And so depression will contribute to the exacerbation and, and perpetuation of the after effects of COVID. The patient ends up going round in circles, further fueling the depression, further embedding it with negative thought processes, further complicating and adding to the already complex long COVID, a downward spiral. And what are the causes of depression in long COVID? As we know, long COVID is complicated. It's a complex condition with multiple causes, dysregulations and dysfunctions. All the symptoms of long COVID result from many possible causes and explanations, not just one cause, one explanation, unfortunately. This all applies to long COVID depression as well. So what are the possible causes for depression in long COVID? Well, there may be the direct physical effects of long COVID on the brain for multiple reasons. That could be that could be due to excess inflammation, so neuroinflammation, inflammation of the nervous tissue. It may be due to uh, the sticky blood, the spl- sticky blood coagulopathy, leading to uh, microthrombi, mini microclots. It may be due to inflamed blood vessels within the brain, endotheliolitis, or it may be due to direct damage caused by the, the, the virus resulting in damage of the white and grey brain matter which results in a condition called synaptic pruning, pruning of the synapses between nerves within the brain, loss of myelin, the sort of the covering, uh, the sheath covering the uh, nerve fibres it may lead to small nerve fiber neuropathy, abnormal vagal sig- signaling. All this is happening in long COVID to varying degrees, resulting in the multiple long COVID symptoms and including in depression. All these damaging processes then lead to disruption of the whole body, balance and harmony, the disruption of the interconnected systems, the immune system, the anti-inflammatory system, the autonomic, the hormonal systems, general disharmony and imbalance. But more specifically in the brain and nervous system, disruption of the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic systems, uh, disruption of the the HPA axis, the hypothalamo-pituitary-adrenal axis, and disruption of the limbic system limbic system responsible for uh, sort of anxiety, uh, fear responses, but also for memory in the hippocampus, hippocampus. All this causes imbalance in the in the chemicals in the brain, the neurotransmitters, serotonin, the happy chemical, and GABA, the calm chemical, and many others. 
Recent research has shown that patients with long COVID have reduced levels of circulating serotonin, the happy chemical. This would lead to depression, i.e. this is a physical happening that is actually directly causing an imbalance, a reduction in serotonin uh, within long COVID. And in, a, in this recently published research, in a paper in October 2023, they help us hypothesize that this contributes to brain fog, memory impairment, impaired vagal, that's the rest and digest, uh, autonomic nervous system nerve, impaired signaling in the vagus nerve. So look up the reference to this in the show notes below. Besides these, there's also disruption in the gut in long COVID, and that results in gut dysbiosis, i.e. A dis dis an imbalance of the friendly gut flora. They're disturbed. This is a common finding in long COVID, clearly shown in a, a number of research studies published. As a consequence of this dysbiosis, there's disruption of the normal gut flora. There's reduction in their production of chemicals, the neurotransmitters, serotonin, back to serotonin, just mentioned that. So 90% of the body's serotonin uh, supply is produced in the gut lining. It also, um, this, this dysbiosis leads to um, an impaired production of dopamine and GABA. Again, really important neurotransmitters. And so the net effect, of course, is that these reductions in these neurotransmitters contribute to the tendency for both anxiety and depression. So these are all physical causes for depression, backed up by research studies, scans and blood tests, evidence that long COVID is in, in general um, and long COVID depression specifically have a physical basis. Along with this in the long COVID setting, let's not forget that the patient is also experiencing all the other long COVID symptoms such as fatigue, headache, palpitations, chest pain, breathlessness. These all then sort of add to the patient's concerns having and therefore have an effect on their mental well-being. And then finally, along with all these physical causes, there are obviously going to be worries about living with long COVID. You know, worries such as, you know, the fact that it's taking so long to get over the long COVID to get better. Patients say, say, you know, when am I? They ask in the clinics and, you know, when am I ever going to get better? Will I ever get better? Nothing seems to be working. They say things like nothing seems to be working, despite doing all the, the advice that the, they're given in the long COVID clinics and just not getting better. Or I don't accept the diagnosis. Someone's missing something. All these things are playing on the patient's mind and it's natural. And they would. And then there are the consequences of sort of having long COVID and the effects on the person, the effects on the family and their friendships, effects on their work, uh, and consequently the effects on their finances. Thoughts of, you know, feeling like a life has been robbed, robbed of their hopes and dreams, smashed. These are all totally understandable worries, stresses, fears, all contributing to despair, despondency, and hence depression. And so to conclude, depression in long COVID will include a combination of all of these, these causes. The impact of the COVID illness on the brain, leading to an impact on their mental well-being. In fact, the impact of the COVID illness on the body, leading to symptoms that impact on mental well-being. The impact of the COVID illness on the patient's life, i.e., as I mentioned, the personal effect, the effects on the personal, on them themselves, 
their family, their finances, their identity, their self-esteem, and, after all, the future. I've emphasised all these physical causes and effects of depression in long COVID in detail, all backed up by evidence-based medicine, for a few reasons, two mainly. For validation and acceptance. Validation, validation that it's a physical problem that leads to effects on mental health and depression. It's physical, it's not all in the head. Tell that to the sceptics, the gaslighters, that say, actually, long COVID is all on the head. No, it's a physical thing. We have the evidence to back that up. And secondly, understanding and acceptance. Understanding the causes for a problem helps you to accept the problem. And accepting the problem makes you receive more receptive to getting help for the problem and in this case for for the depression so there it is that's all the possible causes of long covid depression and it's very complicated and like i say one person may have one of those processes going on maybe two maybe three maybe all resulting in the depression but what you really want to know is, what are we going to do about it? Well, I'll come on to that, the treatment and management of long COVID depression, in part two. That concludes part one, this part, on my talk on depression and long COVID, and the symptoms and the causes, and the reminder of the importance of watching out for those red flags for depression, such as total help hopelessness, complete despair, thoughts of self-harm uh, or su suicide even. These symptoms must be taken extremely carefully and seriously. If there's any suggestion of these, you must always seek help urgently with your own family doctor, your own GP, uh, depending on the level of concern. So, in the second part, I'll talk about the treatments and management and the outcomes. I hope you found that helpful. Check out the references and resources and the links to social media in the show notes below. As I said at the start, any advice, diagnoses, treatments that I mention should only be considered after discussion with your own doctor or medically qualified health professional. So, in the meantime, I wish you well. I uh, wish you well with your long COVID recovery. And hopefully we'll meet in the second part. Cheerio.